Approximately 230,000 cases of prostate cancer will be diagnosed in the U.S. this year, but not every prostate cancer is deadly. Prostate cancer is so prevalent, um, many men during their lifetime will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. And unlike a lot of other cancers, breast, lung, colon, there are some prostate cancers that just sit there. They don't kill you. So even though these are technically cancers, they're not lethal cancers. In most patients, we cannot tell the clinical outcome. Therefore, many patients receive surgery and we know that that's unnecessary. And our goal is really to change that. There is growing evidence that many prostate cancer patients can live without treatment, its risks and side effects, when closely monitored. The key is improving diagnosis and surveillance by improving the cancer biopsy. Diagnosis of prostate cancer depends on prostate biopsy. There's no other way to diagnose the disease. Amazingly, prostate cancer is being diagnosed today almost exactly the same way it was more than 25 years ago. Prostate biopsy is performed in a systematic manner, but in a blind manner. That is, we can't see the, uh, the tumors. Ultrasound is used to guide us to parts of the prostate, and we systematically sample the prostate but we can't see tumors with ultrasound. All that may change in the near future. The new technology begins with an MRI. I want to see, is it um, a, you know, a suspicious dark area? A highly trained radiologist locates and evaluates a suspicious area by using several criteria, including appearance of the prostate and surrounding tissue through detailed tissue contrast in three dimensions. Then we have other parameters we can look at with our new advanced techniques. And one of them is looking at cellular density or cellular packing. Obviously this is a lower resolution image. However, you can see here that there's a very distinct dark area. We use a technique called diffusion weighted imaging, which uh, looks at uh, free water motion restriction. And so areas where the cells are more densely packed have more restriction of water motion. And those are the areas that may indicate a tumor. There is also the measurement of blood flow. Blood arrives earlier and exits or washes out faster in areas of tumor. The results of all these tests are then graded. Diffusion weighted imaging is given the most weighting, uh, followed by the, um, the blood flow images and the T2 weighted images. And that gives us an overall level of suspicion. And that allows us to say, well, if one area looks like maybe a one or two, that's not really suspicious for tumor. That's probably old inflammation. Whereas if it looks like a four or, or a five, that's very suspicious for tumor, and that deserves to be biopsy. Now, for the first time, biomedical engineers at UCLA are taking these detailed images of the prostate and suspected tumor. We take the tissue contrast imaging, the T2 weighted imaging, because it has the highest spatial resolution, meaning it gives us the clearest image. And creating a three-dimensional replica that can be used as a roadmap to guide doctors directly to the suspected tumor for biopsy. My role is really to be the bridge between radiology and urology. What we're trying to do is bring the, th the 3D information into the urology suite. The image is fed from a CD into a device called the Artemis that allows the image to be fused with real-time ultrasound. The 3D processing software actually makes a virtual 3D model of the prostate and of the targets or the suspicious areas in the prostate. And that model is then transferred to the Artemis device, which combines that information with the ultrasound information to virtually map the target areas onto the ultrasound image so that when Dr. Marks is performing a biopsy, he knows exactly where the biopsy device will acquire the sample. Uh, this is a very impressive technology. We've never previously had the ability to actually see prostate cancer under real-time ultrasound. Did, did you catch that, the white that comes here? We have now got the ability to actually identify the area of concern and aim for it. We never had that before. So here's the target, and you can see how our biopsy cores go right through it. 
The technology not only allows doctors to target the suspicious area, but go back to the exact location to resample over time. And then the urologists can use this information to accurately biopsy the prostate cancer, and we can observe the cancer through time to determine if a cancer is growing fast or not so fast. To, then we can decide if a patient can be watched safely or if a patient needs surgery or radiation or other forms of radical treatment. We are uh, interested in trying to avoid surgery where surgery wouldn't be a benefit, where it wouldn't prolong life or ease pain. And many of these little prostate tumors that are being found today, uh, men will die with rather than of.